Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I'm gonna take you out into the woods and fight some monsters and other players. We're going to pick up a hero and we're going to make them the strongest there ever is because I'm gonna show you Village of Legends. This is a really, really cool game and had really become one of my favorites lately. This is a deck builder game where you pick up your own little character and try to make them as strong as possible to fight other players. Today I'm going to show you the setup of this brilliant game. I'm going to show you some of the gameplay and go through some of the rules. So let's just have a look at it. This is the setup of the game. Up here we have market and we have placed out the different categories in each market place. The beer cards on the beer symbol, the scroll cards on the scroll symbol and so on. Taking one card face up, the rest face down. Then we need to fill the market below as well from the main deck. Filling up each of the spaces under the main board. This here is the main deck that have been mixed up by all the other cards. We have some coin cards over here. Each player have picked their character and taking their character board. Each player have taken their character token and put it down in the bottom of the experience track. They have taken their little red HP cube and put it on the top of the HP track. Each player have received 10 cards with 8 coin cards and 2 staff cards. These should be mixed up before the player starts to play. We also have 2 dice. So we're done with the setup, we've picked our players here and it's time to determine who will go first. The first player gets to draw 3 cards from their deck and the second player gets to draw 5 cards from their deck. To determine who will go first, we need to roll the dice. The one that gets the highest amount is the one that goes first. So now we actually get to play the game. This player was the one that got to go first, so they got to draw three cards. They draw three money cards, meaning that during this turn they cannot fight, but they can buy from the market. They have 30 coins on their hand, and on the market there are different values of everything, and you can buy from any spot. This one, for example, right here, costs you 20, meaning that this player could buy this card, put it in their discard pile, take 20 coins from their hand, and put it in the discard pile as well. But they still have one money card left meaning that they could buy another card with the value of 10. A beard card, for example, has the value of 10. So this player gets to buy that card as well. Now we need to refill the market immediately by flipping up the beard and refilling the down road from the main pile. There are a lot of cool weapons and cool monsters and cool cards for you to buy from the market. You really never get bored because there's so many different things for you to choose and use for. From the market you can buy a bunch of cool weapons and monsters, but you can also buy these things right here. Potions, for example, to heal yourself. Scrolls to let you draw more cards or maybe remove cards from the opponent. You have a bunch of different spells where you can heal yourself, you can do attacks, you can defend yourself. Or why not just have a beer and heal yourself a little bit? I mean, you're getting dumber, but at least you are feeling a little bit better. During your turn, you can also choose to sell items for half the price stated down in the right corner. But you can only sell items that has the goal circle. So, for example, if you want to sell this one, well, you can't because it has a silver circle on it. Every now and then you will also find monsters on the market. You will be able to buy these ones as well for the value down in the corner. And these ones becomes kind of like your pet. First they go into your discard pile, but once you have them in your hand, you can play them in front of you. 
This means that the attacking player needs to attack and defeat your monster first before being able to attack you. The life points of the monster is shown down here in the corner. So let's say that this player here has two monsters in front of them and the other player wants to attack using this bad ass hammer. Now if you look at this hammer you can see it has a die and it has a plus two value. Meaning that we need to roll the die, see the pitiful tiny little value here, and then add it up with the additional value on the card. 1 plus 2 equals 3. And remember, we need to defeat these ones before we can start attacking the player. If we look at these cards, we can see that this one has a life point of 2, meaning that this one dies immediately. But... The last point of attack from this one carries on to the next monster. And this one has a life point of 1. So this one dies as well. The attack value from the hammer, if it would have been, for example, 5, the last two points would not carry on to the owner of the monsters. It only carries on between the monsters. Once they are dead, you need to start over and attacking the player. Once the monster is dead, the attacker who killed it get some experience points. They get the market value in experience points instead. You then move the character token up the amount of stack of XP that you have received. On your player board you have some stats. And on them stats you have one that is orange and one that is blue. These ones open up when you reach the required amount of experience points. The defending player takes their dead monsters and put them in the discard pile. And the attacking player puts their card in their discard pile. If they have any more weapons on their hand, they can play these as well. When one player attacks another player, we do exactly as we did on the monsters. We need to roll the die and see what value we got. Then we need to add up the extra score we have on our card, if we have any. We then need to look if the defender has any armor. If they have armor, we need to defeat the armor first. And on a regular weapon like this one, for example, the damage does not carry on from the armor to the character. Once we have beaten down the armor, the player needs to remove the armor and put it in the discard pile. And we can now start to see how much damage we can do on the player. When the player is hit, they need to move down their HP value. Some of these weapons have a heavy symbol on them, meaning that the damage from these weapons actually carries on. For example, if you have a monster in front of your opponent, the damage from this one will attack the monsters first. If there are remaining attack points left, it will then go on to the armor. And if it managed to break the armor as well, and there's still some damage point left, it will go on to the character. But you can only use these weapons once per turn and no other weapon as well. Which meaning that if you use this on your turn, well, it's pretty much the only weapon you're going to use. If you, in the beginning of your turn, have monsters in front of you, they will attack you first before you can do anything. Meaning that the owner of the monsters need to roll the die to see how much attack value each monster will get. Just like the regular weapons, they need to attack your monster first and then your armor and then attack you. But since this player has no monsters or no armor, it's in a lot of trouble. Also, when you have monsters in front of you, you are not allowed to buy any cards from the market. Or use any card that is related to the market. You can also use spells during your turn. There are a bunch of different kind of spells. There's healing spells, there's defense spells, and there's also attack spells. Attack spells works just like the heavy weapons I showed you. These one will go through armor and go on to the characters itself. The defense value will give you well extra defense and the healing will heal you. But you need to have intelligence to be able to use these. And as you see here, this guy has a starting intelligence of one which means that he will probably not use a lot of spells in his career, but you can get more intelligence during the game. On the end of the player's turns, when they cannot play any more cards, they need to discard the cards that they have on their hand that they cannot use. The armor that they have and the monsters that they have in front of them 
they will stay with them to the next round. They then need to draw five more cards and we are ready to start fighting again. This is the way the game goes on. Each player picks up their cards, they play whatever cards they would like to do, they attack, they defend themselves, they can buy from the market if there's no monsters in front of them. And this is the way the two players will keep on battling until one of them eventually dies, makes the other player the winner. Now you can play this with three players as well, where everybody is hitting everybody. You could play this with four players where you have two teams or up to six players. There's really a lot of playing possibilities in this game. And it's so easy to learn. It takes no time at all. It just makes sense all the way through the game. Most of what you need to know, know is standing on the cards themselves. In this game, you have six different characters to choose from with different abilities. You have the dwarf, you have the warrior, you have the maid, the paladin, the elf, and the barbarian. Each one having a female version and a male version on the other side. So there you have it people, that was an overview of Village of Legends for you. This is like I said, one of my new favorite games. I really, really like this game. It's a lot of fun, it's fast action, you're throwing your cards around, you get to play some monsters out there, you get to buy some cool things and you just get into the game really, really fast. Setup time is basically none, I mean it takes no time at all to set this up and it's just so much fun. Fun. I have showed you the Village of Legends now, the base set here, but I'm also going to show you Village of Legends, the Reaper's Hand in another video. This is the co-op version and we're also going to show you the RPG mode here. This one is really, really cool. You can play this solo as well. This is a thick, thick, thick storybook with pages of pages for you to go out and adventure with your friends or just alone. I have played this one a lot alone lately and I'm having so much fun. The rules in this one is the rules that I have just showed you here. Really basic, really easy, but there's some add-ons in this one that I'm going to show you in the next video. So keep an eye out for that one if you like this video. And if you like this video, Please give me a thumbs up, maybe throw in a comment down here in the comment section. I love to interact with you, it's so much fun. This community is just so beautiful. And if you like my channel, if you like my videos, please subscribe to it. Why not, right? It gives me a smile every time I get a new subscriber. So until next week, people, please take care of each other and please keep on spreading that board gaming love that I know you all have. Peace out.